Welcome, Awakening Hearts to Heartfelt Awakening. We are speaking today to Lauren Mariani. Welcome, darling. Thank you so much, Denny. It's so good to be here. I loved reading your bio, and um, you want to empower others in finding their inner power and be able to unlock their awakening. Tell me more about that. <laughs> So uh, about uh, six or seven years ago, I birthed a program that was, uh, I've named it Soul DNA. And part of it is learning exactly who you are. And by understanding that, you're then able to awaken. You're able to connect to your soul on a much, much deeper level because you're in constant communication with it literally for every moment of every day. Because I felt that so often, we rely on our awakening as and when we need it, right? So we find ourselves in a situation and, oh, now suddenly we need to reach out to source. Or ask, now suddenly we need to do some soul searching. And so this program is just a, not a forced situation, but just a much deeper understanding of what it is to connect to our soul and awaken who we are or the dormant DNA strands within us and awaken those up. I love that. So what or who or exactly who you are, you said, exactly, to awaken exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. What exactly <laughs> who you are? <laughs> <laughs> so I think so often we find that, I'll use the word society, but we find that so often you know, as a kid, for example, if you see fairies, you're told that's just silly. If you see giants, for example, you're told that's just silly. And so, you know, unless it conforms to a certain box, it's, you know, it's pushed down. And as we do that, we bury our soul DNA strand within us. And so we suddenly get to, you know, 30, 40 years old, and now suddenly we're actually coming into ourselves and We've experienced, you know, a bit of life and we've gone through all the heartache, but we've become so conditioned that we no longer know who we are because we've been so busy trying to fit in. And so part of knowing exactly who you are is knowing what it is that makes you up, the good, the bad and the ugly. And being able to say, yes, I am that person or no, actually, I'm not. And you've misunderstood who I am. So for many years, I was considered very rude when, in fact, I'm just a painfully shy person. And so every time I overheard it or I, you know, heard somebody else said or somebody accused me of it, I could correct them and just say, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry, I can understand how it would come across as that, but I'm actually just painfully shy. And equally, I was just um, chatting to a friend now and, you know, we were talking about the difference between being passionate and being aggressive. And so that is one of the things is you can have an aggressive DNA strand, but nine times out of 10, you're just extremely passionate. And so when somebody's like, you need to calm down, you're coming across very aggressive. You're able to diffuse the energetics behind it and say, actually, I'm just extremely passionate about this conversation. I'm not being aggressive at all, or I'm not being confrontational at all. <clears throat> yes. And how we're perceiving it is what we would do or what you know, yeah. would project from us, we're perceiving yeah. as that projection. I love it. I know when and I just the learned behavior of society, the stereotypes behind what does aggression look like? What does confrontation look like? What does rude look like? And so when I talk about being exactly who you are, you're able to say, hey, this is who I am in this moment, because I think we, I, I know I certainly did. So I think we, you know, we all birth programs that are based on our own healing. And so for me, one of the things was the concept of having multiple personalities. And I think that we're all too afraid to, to label ourselves that when I think if we were to all take a hard look at ourselves, even just a gentle one for some of us, um, we'll soon realize that actually we all show up with multiple personalities. It just takes a simple irritation to show that, um, you know, we can go from naught to 100. And so for me, it was about embracing those multiple personalities and, um, you know, being able to just be real about it and say, I don't need to be diagnosed or medicated at all. And I don't, I, I've never, you know, even thought of that. But I think 
the majority of us can understand that. And so the moment we start labeling ourselves and being authentic with ourselves, we're able to birth ourselves, really. And labeling others, because I know you mentioned that you were, you're not rude, you're, you're painfully shy. And I know when I first uh, met my husband before we started dating, <laughs> if, if when I first met him, I got vibes of being stuck up kind of thing, you know, yeah. but I was able to kind of let go of that label and observe him a little bit more. And I realized, oh my gosh, he's not stuck up. He's <laughs> painfully shy. And so if I would have yeah. held him to that label, I would have missed out on a really great guy. <laughs> so I love that. And the multiple personalities, you know, uh, as a hypnotist, sometimes when, when you're trying to put someone in trance, a personality will kind of step into the driver's seat mm -hmm. and all the work that you just did will be undone by that personality who just stepped into the driver's seat. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I love that. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So tell me about um these uncharted territories to uncover solutions where others rarely venture. I was curious about that. <laughs> So this, I guess, is the part of alchemy that I love. So I've never, I've always wanted more and not more as an agreed, but just because I believe that if we developed a concept, especially as alchemists or healers or awakened and, you know, enlightened, whatever label we put on it. But when I have a, a, a theory or a motto of take what you need and need what you take. And so I have actively put myself in situations where I've never qualified for anything. And yet in the right moment and the right time, it's been there with absolute precision. And so then I got to the point of what does alchemy look like? Because certainly here in Zimbabwe, a lot of, you know, spiritual people or awakened people believe that alchemy is a dangerous territory and you know there's a very dark side to it and I was like well let's just see how dark it can get and so at that point it was about you know blending different practices because I mean the worst that can happen is it just doesn't work right if it's done in purity it's just not going to work and integrity and so for me it was you know simple things like you know doing a regression but let's remove the emotion entirely I mean, that's never like I researched them and I was like, oh, it's never been done before. But like, just because that's, you know, hypnotherapy once was never done before. And so <laughs> it was literally, there's so many times that I've done practices where I've just thought, let's just start blending things together. Let's start exploring the unknown and seeing what lies out there if we were to understand what integrity means and to work within that integrity and how. Could we use our alchemy or our gift of alchemy to move forward through uncharted things? So I suppose that's no, no different. There's so many times I go and clear a property. It's one of my favorite things to do. And we speak about demons and entities and all of that. I mean, is it really? I, I remember, you know, recently, actually, somebody was like, there, there were four different people. And they were like, oh, it's so, it's so bad. And I went there and I was like, I wonder, is that just their label though? Like when somebody's really scared, when a, when a dog is in a corner, it's really bad. But at the end of the day, it's just hurting. And so what if the entity was just hurting, you know? And so just find the other end of that spectrum every single time. And nine times out of 10, it's nowhere near as dark as what we assume it's going to be. Nowhere near as dark as what we assume it's going to be. But we've got to push ourselves to the other end of the spectrum and trust every single step that we take that, hey, I'm not feeling anything negative out of this. I know everybody else has told me it's negative, but I can't feel that. And so I'm willing to take that next step on the hope that I'm not eaten alive. <laughs> But I think within the spiritual world, it is like that, isn't it? Yes. And many healers um, become healers because they had to heal themselves. So tell me, darling, what is your healing story? <laughs> Mine was um, 
I'll give a defining moment. I remember thinking, this is it. There's nothing in my life. And I'd been through quite a bit um, and was suffering severely in depression at the time. And I was like, right, let me just, what if I just didn't, what if I killed myself tomorrow? I mean, that would be great, you know? And so then I was like, well, okay, so this is how we're going to do it. This is where we're going. But first, the Tupperware cupboard needs to be cleaned up because my husband will never manage with the lunch boxes. And then I started going you know, <laughs> through it like that. And for me, my healing story was about rebranding trauma as I knew it because I couldn't identify with the trauma. So if we went through multiple, if we went through domestic violence or you know some form of abuse or we went through all those things, for me, that wasn't traumatic. I guess like for me, I was like, meh, if, you know, in hindsight, certainly today, I can be like, well, if I wanted to be more than I was yesterday, I'd have to go through that. It's probably your sole contract, right? But for me, what I like to found traumatic was being in a situation and where I got the most healing was being within a very loving Christian home, but not resonating with Christianity. And I found that so much more traumatic being able to see in a world that I couldn't understand at the time and had no one to go to so at that point it was about rebranding trauma and I think my healing journey began when I rebranded trauma and I unlearned everything I had ever learned and so every time I face with a problem where I don't understand it and I can't get through it it's like let's unlearn everything let's flick that switch and go straight back to source and say hey where am I So for me, my healing journey was about rebranding almost every single state of being, whether it was anxiety or depression or um, fear or whatever it was. It was just about getting rid of all of that and just saying, actually, I don't identify with any of those things. And I'm certainly not prepared to entertain them in the slightest. And the moment I did that, that was where true healing began, because I was able to say, I did it on my own. There was no one that was going to come and save me. And I think that was a huge thing. You know, validation is a massive thing and so is expectation. And I think if we can heal from just validation, seeking validation and start seeking it internally, that's massive. I love that. You did it on your own. And I truly believe that there is absolutely nothing we need outside ourselves to to heal. And um, Mm -hmm. you talk about the rebranded trauma and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's integration. You know, it's, 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 it's looking at something, okay, this is not me, but yet there's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in that, but you let go of the identity of it. And that's, it wasn't even like it wasn't even an identity, to be honest, though, Demi. Like, I just, I think when you're pre-programmed from birth, I grew up in a home, I, I grew up in a very safe home, but there was drugs externally out the home. We were a safe house. There was drugs, there was prostitution, there was sexual abuse. And so these things everybody gets upset over. So you form preconceived notion over what trauma is. And is it really, though, like, that's what I ask is, again, is it really trauma? I mean, it's in your soul contract, right? It wouldn't be in your soul contract if you couldn't get over it. I love that. Yeah. (laughs) I know it's probably a really harsh outlook. There's probably many people that will be listening to this thinking, she's crazy. No way. No way. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I wasn't supposed to go through that. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And sure. that was the thing is I started asking, why not me? You know, when you ask the same question repeatedly, why me, why me, why me? And you don't get answers. Your question's wrong. It's, yes. it's not that no one's listening. It's just your question's wrong. It's the wrong question. Yes. Yeah. The minute I forward? asked, why not me? I was like, oh, wow. Oh, that's a much better question to be asking. Wonderful. And so now you um, I'm reading in your bio that you mm. encourage to stand firmly in your own power and claim the life that you you were destined to live. How do we know what we're destined to live? So I've thought about this a lot. When I wrote that, I thought about a lot. When you're a kid, you have a dream. And that dream was uttered, it was whispered, it was fleeting. 
and it was knocked out of you. Somebody somewhere along the line blocks that out. So I believe almost every single child, I don't care what circumstances they're born into, has a dream. But at some point, that dream gets crushed out. And that is your destiny. And whether you're a football player, whether you're a chef, whether you're a healer, that makes no difference because we all heal. I don't believe that, you know, as a healer, I, I'm more special than the football player or the chef or you know, we all have an ability to achieve exactly what we came here for. But we need to uncover, and that's where the dormant soul DNA strands come in because they get pushed down. And so when we understand that we now have a someone living within us, our soul or source living within us, and they know exactly where we're supposed to go. And so if, if source was to tell the human version of us hey, this is where I plan on you to go. I can guarantee you as a human would be like, not going to happen. It's too hard. It's too painful. It's too long. It's too, like, you just wouldn't do it. I mean, anyone, of, anyone listening to this right now, if, if you were to have told yourself 20 years ago, hey, this is where you're going to be. This is what you're going to go through. I can guarantee you'd block yourself in a room and be like, not going to happen. And so the human version of us, had it's an impossibility. We can have an understanding of it, a glimpse of it, of destiny, but your soul knows exactly where it's going. That's your soul contract, right? And so in my mind, the fastest way to live a purposeful life is if I don't know where the hell I'm going, <laughs> is to connect directly to the source within and say, okay, you take over and you lead me. I'm just the vessel. I'm literally just going to be the vessel. I call my vessel my meat suit. I yeah. love that. I love that. Yeah. that and as awesome. soon as I made that shift that this is yeah. just the vessel, the meat suit, yeah. all of the hate and wanting to yeah. change and wanting to be like yeah. and comparing and all that stuff yeah. just went away. Yeah. Just went away, for sure. Absolutely. So tell me, darling, how does one connect to their soul? <laughs> so... I read an article about this and this was the easiest way for me to get it. I had tried multiple connections. We talk about meditation. We talk about spirituality. It just doesn't resonate for a lot of people. That's really hard. And so I was like, help me find an easier way. And there is an article written by Mark Manson called fuck yes, fuck no. And so this article <laughs> is a dating article. You can Google it. It's a very short article. He's written many books. But the short dating article speaks about the power of attraction. And when you see somebody, it's a yes or a no. If you see the way somebody eats, it's a yes or a no. If you see the way somebody dresses, it's a yes or a no. Where do those yeses and nos come from? Because they're not human. They're soul-based. And so if I was to say to you, Denny, tea or coffee, and you were like, I'd really like some tea okay, would you like some coffee? And at that point, you don't necessarily drink coffee, but I didn't offer tea. You're going to drink that coffee and think, I just wish you had offered me tea. That's a sole decision. Or I should and have said so, no to the coffee. That's the thing. And so <laughs> we need to put it, it is, but many people don't because of obligation, right? And so when we start making sole decisions on everyday decisions and connecting to our soul that way, Start listening because we assume it's a big booming voice. We assume it's this fleeting or fluttering thing. We assume it's a conscience or an intuition. And sometimes it's just not those things. Like everyone's going to resonate differently. And so for me, that article really resonated because I was like, God, how many times do I make decisions that actually aren't what I want? And I didn't know what I wanted because decisions were being made for me. And if I did go against the grain, I would feel violated because I didn't get what I want. And so I started saying, this is what I want. And the more I put my foot down, the more I felt that soul connection, you know, within myself that, hey, I'm not being an asshole. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely, that's what I want. I don't want a pizza for dinner. I want my Indian takeaway. Thank you. You can all have your pizza. I want my Indian takeaway. My soul wants it's Indian, like the food DNA strand within the foodie at once an Indian meal. It is. 
<laughs> it is. And so when I thought about like how many decisions, you know, I, I can't meditate. I really struggle to meditate in the traditional sense. And so for me, that determined that maybe I can't connect to my soul. And I realized that actually, what if I redefined it entirely? And I started making soul-based decisions because if they were soul-based decisions, that would mean that I could communicate to my soul. Yes, communicate for sure. Yeah. I love that. So um, tell me about how to birth authenticity. <laughs> I just did a, a coffee conversation on this last night. So authenticity and birthing authenticity is being able to show up knowing exactly who you are. So I likened it last night. If you were invited to a black tie event and you rolled in in your pajamas, whilst there may be an element of authenticity to that, you would feel out of sorts. And so understanding your soul suit, understanding exactly what you bring to the party I'm not very good with geography. So at that point, I'm just going to say, hey, I don't know my geography and move on. Please, can you explain to me? That's authenticity. And it's a feeling where nobody needs to compete against it. It's a feeling where you don't need to compete against yourself. There is no competition because I know exactly who I am. And so for those people who start feeling intimidated by somebody else, just step into your authenticity. Find you, you're not suited up. The moment you feel intimidated, the moment you feel self-conscious, the moment you feel any one of those things, you're not being true to yourself. And there's a longing that is for somebody else or something else. But the moment you're able to look at yourself and say, hey, yeah, I could be on a diet. Hey, yeah, I could do more with myself. Hey, yeah, I could be, you know, a bit more business minded. Hey, yeah, I'm really crap at geography. That's authenticity. I don't need to prove anything. Put your super cape on, for sure. Yeah. And it's Wonder Woman. Happening. I have my invisible <laughs> lasso, my truth lasso. People tell me tell me things. They're like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Well, I put my truth lasso on you. <laughs> but I think, you know, we again, we just don't know how to do that. I think our education system and, again, society teaches us just to shut that all down, really. Yeah, I totally agree with that. We are programmed to do and behave certain ways and mm -hmm. inside it just feels inauthentic. Violated know? is the word I use. Violated. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. we violate each other all the time. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> I call it projectile vomiting, but violating works too. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know, I, I use the word violating because I think so many times we put that into the most extreme sexual abuse. It really isn't. It's the same energetics. Soul violation is soul violation. Either way, you got to clean yourself up after yeah, that. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is nine times out of 10, we do it to ourselves because we're not being authentic. So, do you know, do you want to go and have coffee with a person that talks about their fancy life and you can see their hollow inside no it's a waste of my time it's an absolute waste of my time somebody asked me the other day how why am I always so busy and I was like well I'm busy napping and I'm busy, <laughs> you know gardening and I'm busy spending time with myself but people don't understand that so I'm busy Yes, they won't accept a no, even though no is a complete sentence. So yeah, it's like, it so, really lets them know that no. <laughs> it it no. is, but you know, you, that's the thing is we've got to find loopholes. And so when you say no to somebody, it becomes too personal. But the minute yeah. you say I'd love to, but I'm just really busy at the moment. And I would love to connect, but just not in the next 10 years. Like once I've seen that you've gone through your journey and you've rebirthed, then absolutely. Very cool. So how can people get, get in touch with you? So uh, I have a website that I can be on touch. I'm on Facebook. I'm on, I recently started out of my temper, um, an infinitely possible Facebook group where it's all possibilities exist um, and all dimensions. But generally I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and there's website link. Excellent. We'll leave a link to those in the description for Awakening Hearts to check it out. That's so for somebody who's who's awakening 
and watching this right now, what would you tell them? Give me a moment to channel it. I want you to think about what source looks like and to form an image in your mind about what source looks like. Across every single religion, so we are made in the image of source. And so I want you to put yourself next to source and think if I had all the power and the same power that source has, what would that be? What would that look like? What would I do? And there's no limitation because the only limitation is what you believe. You are the only person who can understand limitation in its entirety. Other people can never put a limitation on you because you, by complying to that limitation, it's ultimately you that limits yourself. It is never somebody else putting a limitation. And so whilst you're standing next door to source and you're awakening, explore where the possibilities go. Explore where the possibilities go. And when somebody puts limitations on you, you are the one choosing to accept and live by those limitations. Love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Awesome. This has been fan freaking tastic. Thank you so much, <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> Thank what a you great so much for having me, Danny. It's been amazing. Absolutely. And Awakening Hearts, please let me know what you loved and what you would love more of. And in the meantime, keep being amazing.